Hey, this is Steven with QBbox.com. Right now, I am talking with the one and only Cut Chemist. How you doing today? Hey, pretty good. How's it going? Going good. So, I want to begin by talking about how you got involved with the Regenerations Project. How did this opportunity come about? Not quite sure. I just got a, um, an email from my manager, you know, and I want, they, wanted to, they wanted me to get down with the project. So, um, of course, I was excited and honored mm -hmm. by the request. And um, and I was also excited just to learn who else was involved. I mean, some pretty big names for today. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, so uh, so you know, for, for both reasons, you know, I want to definitely give it give it my all and and kind of bring some turntablism to the table because I didn't think anybody else that was doing you know that they told me who was doing it. I didn't think I, I represented something unique in that respect. So. Uh, so I wanted to kind of bring that, bring that into the mix. Yeah, yeah. But it all worked out. Cool. Well, day in, day out, um, your remix appears on the album. Tell me, going into remixing the track, how did you approach it? Did you approach it any differently than you would on any other remix? Well, <clears throat> you know, with, with, with remixing, you know, it's, it's, with me, there's a fine line with, you know, taking the integrity of the original version and, you know, what you can take, you know, add your own and, you know, take away from the song, take it out of what context, you know, and um, what elements you should use, stuff like that. So, and especially with Nick and Cole, I mean, you know, I didn't want to, yeah, I didn't want to, like, you know, there's certain things that I, I felt like I couldn't do, like I, you know, chop up his vocals so much that you can tell it's him, you know, stuff like that. You know, you, you want to kind of keep certain things intact mm -hmm. and then, um, take it out of context and, you know, maybe musically or challenge it maybe a little bit, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, which I, I tried to do when uh, I changed it from a big band jazz number to a samba, which, you know, I thought that was kind of challenging because it's not, it's a completely different deal, you know, it's, it's all of a sudden living in a whole different culture <laughs> mm -hmm. musically, so, um, you know, that's kind of what I set out to do anyway, to kind of make it a little bit more mine and a little less just like yeah we'll just kind of redo the track but just add drums to it you know i didn't want to really do that i wanted to make it a whole different kind of song yeah well uh, i mean the result sounds incredible it's got a nice balance between that big band sound and um that hip-hop edge it's just a good balance of the two um was it hard to yeah. to kind of strike that balance um to kind of preserve the big band sounds and uh just kind of add your own thing to it oh absolutely i mean yeah, the big band part kind of still creeps through with the the horns are kind of in there a little bit. It's but it's real sparse, you know. It's not it's not as uh, um, rich with horns as, as the original. But I mean, the focus is more on the um, <clears throat> on the groove anyway in, in my mix. And um, yeah, definitely uh, drums play a big role. I mean, that's why I picked the song in the first place is because of the lyric of thousand drums. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, that's, <clears throat> I kind of had to make sure the drums were, were going to be in there. Cool. Um, well, I'm sure you've listened to the entire album in its entirety. Uh, if mm -hmm. you had to pick another track on this album that kind of impressed you the most or kind of stuck out from the rest, which one would it be? Oh, man. <clears throat> there, are, there are a lot of good ones on there. I mean, I think um, the Bevel Gaberica one, um, what was it Brazilian Love Song? Mm -hmm. That uh, that is just, that is outstanding. I, I, that 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 may be my favorite. But then again, the the one with Natalie Cole that Will I Am did, although it's simple, it's it's really good. It's really effective. Like I almost kind of want to. I guess I almost get a little misty when I listen to it. Mm -hmm. Well, just kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just kind of expanding the scope um, to the whole project in general. What do you think? this uh, Regenerations album is going to bring or provide to the hip-hop community and beyond, maybe even to people that don't um, primarily enjoy hip-hop or urban artists or Latin artists, just um, what do you think people will get out of it? Oh, um, well, hopefully they'll get hit to a legacy that they might not know about, which that is Nat and Cole. And, or maybe they, they knew about it but didn't really listen to the music. I mean, you know, I'm definitely guilty of not knowing as much about Nat King Cole before the project as I should have. I 
mean, I knew who he was, but I didn't run out to go buy any of his CDs. But um, now that I got to listen to a lot of this stuff and, and you know, listen to how people digest it as, as, as producers in the current music industry, um, yeah, it made me appreciate it a, a little bit more and or maybe even a lot more. And so hopefully it'll do the same for people. I don't think it'll just attract the hot people. Um, but everybody. You know, I think everybody can get into this. Alright, so I want to... Because Nat and Cole is so universal anyway, so... Yeah, yeah, that is very true. Um, so I want to um, kind of switch gears and talk about your work um, specifically. Is there anything new that you're working on? I mean, I assume you're always working on something new, but anything uh, current at the moment? Um, just a new album. New album. Let's talk about that. What What's in the works? Um, to be, I, what's going to be the shape of the album? I guess. Um, when can we expect to hear it? What's the deal? Um. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Well, you know, I put out an album a couple of years ago on Warner Brothers, and now just trying to follow that up. Um, but it's going to be probably a lot more electronic and. Uh, less organic, um, more vocals, uh, more vocal experiences, I should say. And, um, but hopefully, um, yeah, just, you know, still scratching and doing my thing. But obviously it'll just, you know, it'll change musically a little bit. So hopefully my fans will be ready for that. Okay. Well, you said that you're, I guess, enlisting outside help or features, so to speak. I, who can we expect to hear you collaborate with on this album, if you have anything laid down so far? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are always local artists. There's a, there's a really great MC that we've already done some songs. Uh, this guy Blackbird. If, um, and I think, you know, we'll be hearing a lot more from him in the future because he's just outstanding. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, he's definitely on a few songs on my album, so... That's for sure, but I'm, you know, I'm looking to collaborate more with Charlie Spinell, a friend from Jurassic Five, and yeah, yeah. Um, my friend Hymnal, who I did uh, um, songs with on my last album. He'll definitely be in there, and some of the same people like Mr. Lift, um, Edon, you know, people like that. I, I like kind of keeping the ball rolling with my friends. Okay, excellent. And I mean, fans really took to the hard sell, which was your mix with GJ Shadow. Um, is that something we could ever see you linking up again to pursue? Maybe another project? Um, yeah, those projects seem to come every few years. So um, the hard sell was probably our biggest campaign. So I can't imagine us doing another one for another few years. I mean, maybe even longer. I think it was six years since the last one we did. Mm-hmm. Um, so just, you know, be patient and, um, you know, we need to just kind of, uh, you know, uh, go back in the lab and think about that one. <laughs> All right, cool. And I see that you're off to do a tour of Australia in a few months. Um, you've toured down under before, right? Yeah, many times. Excellent, excellent. So, um, what, what do you have in store for that, I, uh, I guess, leg of the tour, the ongoing tour that never ends? Yeah, Damn right. Um, well, it's, uh, it's you know, going to be like a 90-minute show, multimedia, visuals, um, and a lot of turntables and a lot of, just a lot of turntable gymnastics tricks and a good performance. So hopefully, I mean, they seem to really like it down there. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I think it'll be fun. Cool. And can we expect you to do a U.S. tour maybe after that or sometime in between? No. No, I don't think I'm going to do anything out here until my record comes out. Excellent. Well, um, is there anything else we should expect from you in the foreseeable future? Um, no, I think I'm going to just lock my way back up in the lab and and uh, make the new record. Just concentrate on that. Very cool. Well, Cut Chemist, thank you so much for talking with me today. I truly appreciate it, man. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, and uh, yeah, have a good day. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Bye.